with all the types of processed foods, beverages, assortments, where do watermelons come in play? In fact, watermelons have a more diverse background than most people know about. For being such a normal fruit, its background is being put aside because the relevance to most people is being useful information. But it is a staple in American society as being part of holidays and primarily summer events as it's a staple food. For me, it's one of my most cherished memories of when I was younger, when I would eat watermelon and pizza. And it was great, great memories. But watermelons have a much bigger past, with a story more intertwined than most people know about. The place where watermelons originate is in Africa. Somewhere in Africa, it, it is unknown though. But according to Egyptian hieroglyphs and Hebrew texts, it portrays watermelons as being pre present about 5,000 years ago. According to Stratus, theories are literally all over the map. Watermelons are called Citrullus planatus currently and have been called since they were named by their Latin name. But it is wrong because planatus means hairy and watermelons, they're not hairy. Well, to get a rough estimate of when it's believed to be discovered, watermelons were discovered about 5,000 years ago. When Egyptians found them, they were bitter and unappealing to eat. But with more cultivation of watermelons, more variety started to show up. And with that, it just kept going till current uh, varieties. It was originally, according to Gunter, it was cultivated in the Nile River Valley eventually moved east to China roughly 1,000 years ago. Since more and more watermelons were being grown and being exported, a huge variety began to arise. Now the terrain where watermelons are grown are different from here to there in the world, but of current estimates there's about 50 types of watermelons present, and they are defined by the area they are cultivated in and the terrain. For many watermelons, size, shape, are the things that define them with their color and texture, of course. They range from about 5 pounds to about 10, and at most 200 pounds, but that's more with competition ones. They take about 85 days to mature, with each plant having about 4 to 5 melons, no, 2 to 4 melons per plant. According to Grant, there are 4 basic types of watermelons, seedless, picnic, icebox, and yellow-orange flushed. With so many types of watermelons in the world, there are certain types that have become the dominant one in one area. For example, the US and Mexico, their favorite watermelon currently is like seedless watermelon because it's seeds are yeah. But throughout the world there's different varieties that define their their area. The difference in watermelons are not very drastic between countries because of the exporting of different watermelons. But then there's Japan. Watermelons grow normally in Japan as any other place in the world. But the Japanese have managed to find, find a way to like mold them into like shapes like cubes or pyramids or stuff, which is used mostly for decoration, not most and mostly used for ornamental pieces for like an occasion, but not for eating. Watermelons grow nearly every continent of the world except Antarctica of course. And they get sold a lot. In the U.S., there was approximately 126,000 acres of watermelon grown, which was equivalent to $460 million worth of product. They grow in, they grow in a, a, a pH of about 5.8 with the acidity of a pepper to about 65 to 95 degrees Fahrenheit around the breadbasket area or the middle, Midwestern place. Fun fact about it, about watermelons, the first painter was Giovanni Stanchi in 1645, who painted a still life with oil and canvas, which portrayed watermelons, and it showed what watermelons they had back 500 to 600 years ago. The knowledge from this speech is very odd, because most people don't take the time to learn about the history of food that they eat, but it is, it's a relevant part in history, because it's a small sliver of history that most people don't know about. It will, it will be ever present in many people's households. And that is why it is a cool topic. Thank you.